Okay, so in today's tutorial, we're going to have a lot of fun with nodes, and we're going to make a really cool sci-fi landscape. So let me show you what it looks like, and we'll get into it. So this is what it looks like here in Eevee, but this is rendered in cycles because we are playing with a little bit of glass. And if you want to download this project file that you're seeing right here, you can go purchase that. The link is in the description. You can go check that out. It's only for a dollar. So let's get into actually making this guy. All right, so the hardest part of this whole thing is the floor. It's a lot of nodes. Well, not a lot. But it's more than I've really dealt with in a long time. So we're going to hit S5, I guess. Hit Shift A. And I mean, Control A and apply scale. So now we have this guy. Let's go over here to the shading editor and uh, let's start playing with it. So let's go over here to look dev. And then I'm actually going to hop over here to Eevee. I'm going to turn off bloom. And then I'm going to bring off this background. So now we have this. Let's click new. And let's make it kind of dark right here, halfway in the middle. And let's make it metallic. So now we have metallic basic principle bsdf so let's make the bones of this shader so let's go ahead and hit shift a and add in a bump bump node so let's add in a voronoi so type in vor and plug this voronoi texture into the height now if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled just hit Control t bring that mapping and that texture coordinate here and bring the texture coordinate to the object coordinate now we have all this craziness let's bring the scale down to zero point Let's bring the scale down to 1.7 here in the Voronoi. And then on the strength, let's bring this down to right about here on the bump. And then right here, change it to change it to Chevy Chev. And on closest, bring it to Crackle. So now we have this fun bumpiness thing. Now, let's add in a color ramp here. Type in a color ramp and plug him right here in front of the Voronoi and bring the white portion all the way back. So we're flattening out those tops. And now you have this really interesting beveled Voronoi cool situation. Now it's flat, got a little landscape. Now let's go ahead and add the second shader. So what we'll do is hit Shift D, bring this guy down here, and let's just replace it. Let's design the next thing. It's just going to be a simple brick. So add, so add another bump here. Plug him here, get a brick texture, and we need to play around with a little bit of stuff here. But first off, let's get this mapping, this texture coordinate here, and just plug him into the brick textures um, vector. Now let's bring our scale and make it, say, 3.4. And then let's zoom in here and start playing with this mortar size. Make the mortar size, say, 0 0.03, right about there, and then the mortar here actually giving it that interesting bottom let's bring this bump here so we can just get some better view so now we have these bricks let's bring the mortar let's bring the mortar smoothness at let's put it at five so now we have this really nice poking out brick texture now we got to mix these two guys together with just a simple mix node uh, mix shader here so mix mix shader and bring this principle here and plug it here to the bottom socket. So now we have these two guys interacting pretty awfully. So we got to use this factor right over here to tell them how to interact with each other. So what we're going to do is get a color ramp right here. And then let's take this Voronoi right over here. And let's actually bring him up using the G key and centralize him because we're going to be using him again later. So let's bring him and plug this color here into the color ramp. And then bring this color, plug that into the factor. And then and then what I actually want to do is take the mix shader here, actually swap out the order here. So now you can see these guys in the middle. And let's take the color ramp, change it from linear to constant. So we get a harder edge. And then you can start to reveal these guys here in the middle. Now for the for the um, right over here in the uh, brick, let's add a color ramp. I want to add some randomization on the actual bricks. So Let's bring the black portions and bring them up. See if you do that, some of these bricks start to disappear. So you can just add some randomness here in these bricks. So it's a little bit more sort of sci-fi organic kind of feel to it. So now we have all this craziness. Now we need to add those lights here in the middle. So what you have to do is take this mix shader, shift D and duplicate it, plug him right here. Let's get an emission. Whoops, that's displacement. Emission, just right here, and plug the emission right here into the mix shader. And let's actually highlight this here by and hit G and scoon them out because we are going to need a little bit of space here for this last little bit of setup. 
So let's make the color down here more of an orange. Now you can see it's just stretching over everything. What we need to do is add in a color ramp. Plug the color ramp into the color. So we actually didn't need to add that orange. Let's put this orange right over here. And then we need to add a gradient. Gradient texture. Plug him right here. And let's get these guys. Get all these guys and move them back some more. Missed him. Okay, so all right, hit Control T if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Switch it to Object, and right here now you can see the gradient affecting it straight in the middle. But we need to change it from linear to spherical, and now we have this guy. That's what we're looking for. And then you can bring up the strength a little bit. And it, what's really cool is you can start to see the brighter portions up to the darker, and it's really nice. But we need to crunch this and shove it into these crevices here in the middle. So we need to play with this factor. So all we have to do is add in a color ramp right here. And then let's go way out here and grab this Voronor here that's sort of running everything. And let's just stretch him and plug him straight into that color ramp. And then plug the color ramp into the factor of our second mix shader. So now you can see him doing that. Let's flip the color ramp here. So now it's looking like that. And let's bring him all the way in. And now he's starting to go into those crevices the way we want it to look. Just like that. And now he's in there. Now what's really, really cool about this is if you take this black portion here on the color ramp that drives the emission color and you bring him in, he actually animates out in a really, really cool way, but he stops there. So what I did was actually took the scale here and messed with it. So like scale of three, scale of three actually shrinks it. So you have to actually bring it back so it scales it out like that say and so that looks like 0 0.5 cents so I'm just going to control C that control V so that's how you scale them out then you can take him and animate him outward in that so now that we have the foil let's start playing with that little thing you saw here in the middle so that's just first off simple cube playing with him like that and then let's just squash him down to right about there and then I'm going to scale them in a little bit. And then I'm going to take this top portion. Then I'm going to take this top one and then go to here to face select. And I'm just going to hit X. I'm going to hit X and click faces. So now that we have this guy, and then I'll add just a simple solidify modifier to him. Just like that. And then a bevel. So we've beveled him a little bit. So next thing we need to do is add in another cube. Put him there right here and then I'll squash him just like that and also add a bevel onto him and then bring him down some more and then all I have left to do is add these little cubes here on the side so let's add in another cube scale him way far down bring him over and now we have him here let's bring him up a little bit bring him out and then bring him to the edge and then add an array so let's get that array modifier here and then just tell it where to go. So bring him here. And then all you have to do is stretch him this direction. So just here on that count. Just like that. And then and then do that for each side. All right, now that we have this, let's just add in a simple metallic shader to those little boxes. Just like that. So click him, hold down control, and then control L, link the materials. Now we have all the same materials on here. And let's add that same material here on this guy. This guy, we're actually going to make him transmissive. So all the way down here, add transmission. And if we go back to the cycles engine, control Z, you start to see some fun stuff happening right here on the bottom. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide him by hitting H. We're going to add one more cube. And what this guy is going to do is add in a little story into our scene. So all we're going to do is we're going to go back to shading and we're gonna add in a simple version of what we just did here. So let's get in and add a mix shader, just like that. Add an emission, emission shader, bring them all the way down here. And then let's go ahead and add in a color ramp. And let's add in that Voronoi. Going pretty quickly because we've technically already kind of done this for a second ago. So. Let's get distance to Chebyshev, closest to Crackle. And we should see some stuff happening. Let's change this to the orange that we have down there. 
and then start playing with the color ramp till we get what we're looking for just like that and then let's flip the order here so now that we have this let's make this metallic make it pretty dark and then squeeze in that those lines again right around there and then make it pretty bright right in there so now let's add back that thing up there hit Z here into the look dev so now we have that metal part but last thing we really need to do is add in a light so I'm gonna add in a shift a add in a point light and then I'm gonna make this intensity I'm gonna put it at 100 right now that might be too much but nope doesn't look like it's too much so let's add in our camera hit control alt 0 snap that camera to view hit rendered check it out here looks okay let's go to the world settings to bring that down to zero let's go to the world settings and bring that brightness all the way down to black and then let's take everything here let's hide the plane and then box select that put that plane back in and I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit don't like how big it is right about there and then bring my camera and then we can actually zoom him in so now this is our scene let's make that light slightly blue here and then let's add some depth of field so let's go ahead for depth of field shift a let's add in an empty a plain axis and this is going to tell it where to actually point the depth of field or the camera for focus so click on the camera click on depth of field on the focus object click the empty right here in that focus object we're going to the rendered view and then we're going to bring our f-stop down to 0 0.1 just to see and that looks like that's a good number for that and for our light and I'm gonna bring my light up a bit now I'm gonna bring my light up a bit so we get some softer images here softer lighting I mean and then bring the scale of this light right here on the sides just bring them up a little bit till it starts to fill out the scene a little bit but don't make them too big then it'll start to soften too much and it won't look good so that looks right about what we're looking for let's give it 150 on the strength and that looks like what we're trying to go for. Now, if you want to even out the lighting, you can go and add in an HDRI to your scene, but I like how it is looking right now. So this is the scene that we're making. Now, because it's in cycles, let me just show you guys. I put my renders, um, put my render samples at 500, and then I also here, I added some denoising. So I just left it at the default settings here, and then left it at 500. You would go to render, render image, and there you go. So there you go. You made an interesting sci-fi landscape design. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.